In this video, we are going to pick up from where we left off and we're going to be doing some more example questions related to uh, equations of circles. So let's get straight to it. It says a circle passes through the points P minus 1, 4, 1, 6 and 5, 4. Find the equation of the circle. So basically, in short, you're given three points through which that circle is passing and you have to find the equation of that particular circle. So as I always say, it's always a good idea to make a rough sketch and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So minus one four means it's gonna be somewhere over here. One six means that it's gonna be somewhere over here. Let's say here's two, four, and six. Remember, uh, there's no need to concentrate too much on the aesthetics part. And five four means that it's gonna be somewhere over here. Okay, so we have a circle which is passing through these three points. And what we have to do is we have to find its equation. All right, so let's get straight to it. Okay, there you go. That should do it. Okay, now, this is quite a comprehensive question, I should mention. And uh, you have to have a very step-by-step -step approach when you're solving this question. Okay, so first thing is, if you want to be able to find out the equation of the circle, remember you need two things, right? The, uh, the first thing that you need is the center through which, I mean, the center of the circle. And of course, you need to know what the the radius of that particular circle is okay so how exactly am i going to get my hands on the center and on the radius so first things first these two points these three points in fact are making two chords okay now remember that if there is a perpendicular line per a line that's perpendicular to the chord okay it has to pass through the center of the circle okay that's that's what that's what the circle property tells us okay uh, i think first or the second circle property is that a perpendicular bisector to the chord uh, let me just change the color of the perpendicular bisector to green yeah so perpendicular bisector to the chord basically passes through the center or if you remember any line that's drawn from the center which is uh, bisecting the chord is also perpendicular to it so where exactly am I going from here? So let me let me point out. So basically, this line is being bisected by this green line over here, okay, which I'm now highlighting in purple. And this is the center of the circle. And the same case applies over here that this line, which are now I'm highlighting in green, has been bisected by this line, which also happens to be perpendicular to it. And this point that you see right here is the center okay so what do i have to do now i need i know for a fact now that these two lines which one the one in purple and the one in green okay let me just label them so this line oops sorry this line right here line one and this line right here line two if i find out the point of intersection of these two lines i will have the center of the circle so that means that's what my focus on that's what my focus is going to be immediately that I need to find out the point of intersection of these two lines. Now, before I can find out the point of intersection of these two lines, I basically need to find out the point of intersection of, uh, sorry, uh, I need to find out the equation of these two lines. So remember, this is point P, this is point Q, this is point R. So long story short, these two lines are basically, per one of them is the perpendicular bisector of P and Q, and the other is the perpendicular bisector of Q and R. So here's what I need to do. I need to find out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of P and Q. Okay, so let me write down the coordinates of P again. So the coordinates of P are one comma four, so, sorry, minus one comma four, and the coordinates of Q are one comma six. So what's the first step? The first step is you find the gradient. So let's find out the gradient. So six minus four over one minus minus two. So that means one minus minus one, sorry. 1 minus minus 1. So 2 upon 2, which means it's 1. So this is the per gradient of the line PQ. That means the gradient of the line perpendicular to it or the gradient of the perpendicular bisector of PQ is going to be minus 1. And the next thing is I need to find out the midpoint of P and Q because that's the point through which the perpendicular bisector is going to be passing. So minus 1 plus 1 upon 2, comma 4 plus 6 upon 2. So minus one plus one is zero, zero point two is zero, four plus six is 10, 10 point two is five. So now you have all the ingredients, you have the gradient and the point. So it's just a matter of putting them together. So y minus five equals to minus one, x minus zero. So y is equals to minus x, 
plus 5 okay and let's put this on the side for now and focus on finding the equation of the perpendicular bisector of QR okay so let me switch to another color for that in fact let me color code this also I'm going to turn this purple so you guys know that this is the equation of the purple line and now I'm going to switch to green so I'm finding out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of Q and R okay so first things first let's find a, let's write down the coordinates of Q which are 1 comma 6 and let's write down the coordinates of R which happen to be 5 comma 4 yeah so let's find out the gradient so 4 minus 6 over 5 minus 1 4 minus 6 is minus 2 5 minus 1 is 4 and when I simplify this let's see what do I get 4 minus 6 is, so that's gonna be minus 1 upon 2 yeah and the gradient of the perpendicular bisector of Q and R is going to be 2 and that makes sense it's a positive line so yeah I mean it's, a, it's an upward sloping line so that makes sense which is why basically I prefer to make a rough sketch so you know when you're working things out you can sort of look and see whether it makes sense or not so you know just a, it's always a good idea to go the extra mile okay next is the midpoint so midpoint is going to be 1 plus 5 upon 2 comma 6 plus 4 upon 2 so 1 plus 5 is 6 6 upon 2 is 3 6 plus 4 is 10 10 upon 2 is 5 okay then so y minus 5 equals to 2 x minus 3 so y is equals to 2x minus 6 plus 5 so y is equals to 2x minus 1 so this right here is equation of another line so i'm just going to highlight the two equations that we just found here's one here's another and now if i want the point of intersection what do i need to do i need to solve them simultaneously and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm just going to equate the two so minus x plus 5 is equals to 2x minus 1 so now I'm looking at uh, minus x minus 2x is equals to minus 6 because that's what minus 1 minus 5 is. So minus 3x equals to minus 6. Cancel, cancel. x is equals to 6 upon 3 which is equal to 2. Okay, let's quickly find out the y coordinate also. So I'm going to use the first equation which is minus x plus 5. So y is equals to minus 2 plus 5. So that means y is equals to 3. So I have the x coordinate and the y coordinate which by the way is not only the point of intersection of the two lines okay it's not only this point it is also the center of the circle so that means we now have our hands on the center which is 2 comma 3 so the next thing the next thing that we require to find out to sort of you know complete the puzzle is the radius and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna find out the radius so how exactly are we going to get our hands on the radius let's see so we have the center and we have three points that are on the circumference okay so we can pick any one any one that you like and use the distance formula and get the radius so i'm going to do just that the center is two three i'm going to go with q one six so the radius or r squared is going to be equal to square root of one minus two the whole thing squared plus six minus three the whole thing squared so one minus two is minus one minus one squared is one actually there's no need to write one squared just one is enough six minus three is three the square root of three is nine so there you go one plus nine inside the square root is ten actually there's no there's no need to put the square root so i'm just gonna cancel that so that means r squared is equal to ten now let's put all the ingredients together so now we're looking at x minus two the whole thing squared plus y minus three the whole thing squared equals to r squared which is basically equal to ten and now we have the equation of this circle so i'll give you guys a quick recap of what i've done so far so here's what i've done so we had two points p q and q r all three of them were basically uh, on the circumference of the circle and we had to find out the equation of the circle passing with the passing through these three points okay so the very first thing we did was we found out the perpendicular bisector the equation of the perpendicular bisector of p and q and then we found out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of q and r actually even before that the first step is realizing that you need the perpendicular bisectors because if you have two chords the equation of the circle will have the center as the point where the two perpendicular bisectors to both the chords intersect okay so once we did that once we found out the equation of both the perpendicular bisectors we solved them simultaneously to get the radius and once we had the radius we had to use any one point and use that with the center and use the distance formula to get the 
radius and uh, that's it we just plugged everything together and found out the equation of the circle all right so now we're going to do another example and oftentimes you'll find that the question has given you the equation of the circle you know just like how the question can give you the equation of a straight line it can ask you to find the gradient and the y-intercept which means you have to bring it in that particular form the way in which we are used to seeing the equation of a straight line so that can happen in equation of circles also and that's exactly the case over here so you are given the equation of a circle which and you have to find the radius and the center okay so the way to do this question is Again, you got to be very systematic and you got to make sure that the concept of perfect square is on point. If it's not, then you're going to be struggling with questions like these. So I have a video on perfect squares. I'd suggest go and watch it. I will, however, try and explain it in this question also whilst I'm solving this question also. So you can use this question to learn the concept of computing square also. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the term with x squared in it and then the term with x in it. And then I'll leave a bit of space. I'll write the term with y squared in it and then the term with y in it. I'm going to leave a bit of space and whatever constant that I have in the question, which is minus 32, I'm going to take that to the other side. So when I do that, it turns positive 32. Okay. Now is where I complete the square. Okay. So you have X square minus four X. What is it that you need to add over here in order to complete the square? So we look at the coefficient of X, which is four. We divide that by two. So that's two. And then we add the square of it. Now to maintain balance, if you've added something on the left hand side, you got to make sure that you add the exact same thing on the right hand side also. Okay, now we bring our attention towards y squared plus 6y. So again, the coefficient of x squared here is positive, sorry, the coefficient of y here is positive 6. So we divide 6 by 2, which is 3, and we add the square of 3. So let's do just that, plus 3 squared. So I'm going to add 3 squared on the right hand side also. So now this, let me switch to green. Yeah, so this compresses into x minus 2 the whole thing squared. Okay, we put a plus sign in between and this compresses into y plus 3 the whole thing squared. Okay, if you're curious that how exactly uh, does this happen, you can expand x minus 2 the whole thing squared or minus y plus 3 the whole thing squared, perhaps both, and see whether you get the result above or not. Okay, now we look at what the radius is going to be so that means we just have to simplify all of this so 32 plus 4 plus 9 let's use a calculator 32 plus 4 plus 9 so we're looking at 45 so that means as far as the center goes let's just compare it with the general form so we have x minus a plus y minus b the whole thing square equals to r squared so as far as the center goes center is going to be 2 comma minus 3 and the radius is going to be equal to square root of 45 now it's up to you if you want to leave it like this or if you want to write it in decimal or third form sorry uh the simplified version of the third or decimal whatever it is that you want to write it as that's up to you or it depends on what the question the way the question wants us to but anyway questions like these are very important and uh the prerequisite for being able to solve this question flawlessly is the concept of perfect square so if that's not up to the mark you can always uh i'll post a link of uh, the of the video that i made on computing square in the description box you guys can check it out but anyway uh that's that brings me to the end of this video i'll see you guys in the next one until then take care bye, -bye.